Hi, I'm Dave Robinson, and welcome to a screencast where I'll be using R and R Studio to analyze data I haven't seen before. So this data set is a little bit different from the data sets I usually analyze on this channel. It's Chord 19. That's a, um, a challenge of a large set of scientific papers that have been released uh, by the um, uh, by the White House and a group of, of research groups uh, containing uh, many thousands of articles about the coronavirus. So I don't know about you, but I've been feeling really uh, kind of helpless throughout this um, uh, this global crisis, and um, I tried to think of what I could do, what I could do that would um, could in even the smallest way uh, help out. Uh, so I am. Um, uh, this is going to be a this is going to be a screencast about downloading this data set and then taking a look through it, exploring it, and especially getting into a form that you can use other tools within R to analyze. Uh, the disclaimer is that while I am a data scientist, I'm not an epidemiologist. While I do have a PhD in computational biology, I am not a virologist. And while I um, have a good amount of experience in text mining, I'm not really I'm not uh, the kind of expert that generally dives in and does research level. Um, uh, projects in terms of understanding scientific papers and um, and using uh, natural language processing to gain those kinds of insights. I'm just seeing what what I can do with um, uh, with the data set data set that, that I have here. So I'm going to be taking a uh, Kaggle has provided a set of tasks that they're recommending people go through. I definitely encourage people watching uh, to take a look at the data and then maybe try out some of these tasks. I don't know whether I'm going to look at one of those tasks myself. I might just spend a bit of time cleaning and uh, formatting the data and maybe answering a couple exploratory questions. I also want to take a little bit of a look at what's called um, uh, size spacey, which is a um, uh, Python, which is a Python um, a set of packages for working with scientific um, uh, literature. Uh, I, that's something I can, I can actually show how to do that with um, using that with tidy text. All right, so I'm going to get started, and hopefully this can be um, helpful and educational to other people who might be interested in diving into this data. So I've already downloaded the data, I've already decompressed it, um, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. It looks like, um, where is it? Downloads. No, there's this one. Oops. Oh, yeah. Here it is. All right, so this is the, um, this is what the, what the, the, this is what the uh, data set looks like, and uh, it's decompressed. It has um, a metadata CSV. We're definitely going to take a look at that, and it's got folders. I took a brief look before I started, just enough to see that I think I could get something out of this um, out of this session. And uh, if we take a look at one of these JSON files, it looks like each of the JSON files has a paper ID. It has a um, some metadata like the title and authors. It has an abstract. It has body text, and it has what look like references, uh, bibliography entries. So there's a lot that we can pull out. Of course, we can take a look at the text. Uh, we're especially probably going to want to take a look at the abstract. Um, but the um, uh, and we're definitely not going to be able to use a um, use text mining to gain like really deep insights into this. But we can definitely do some categories, look at some look at what are topics of these papers, and. Uh, yeah, but we're going to need to parse it in JSON first, which maybe not everyone has experience doing. And that's why I wanted to show that in this um, in this screencast. So I'm going to get started just like I uh, usually would. This is going to be called Chord19, the, the data set. I'd say library, tidyverse, library. Uh, I'm going to need tidy text. And hey, I'm going to need JSON, JSON light to be specific. I'm not going to be working much with that yet. But what I'm going to start with is read CSV. I'm going to read in the metadata. All sources metadata 2020. All right, so here we have the metadata for that. All right. And uh, what it looks like we have is okay, we have a source, we have a the paper's title. We have the, um, this is an identifier for the paper. Uh, 
Some will have PubMed IDs. That's really useful as a standard way to refer to a paper, maybe get other kinds of metadata. Uh, the, um, might, we might do that today. License is gonna be really helpful. Oh good, it has the abstract. Okay, that's definitely gonna be helpful. Um, the publication year, a little bit over time maybe. Mm. A lot of them are missing. A lot of them are missing the abstract too. Some of the licenses look a little confusing. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna rather than just browsing through, I'm gonna count a couple of these. Uh, those who work with my screencast know that I love counting things. I'll say count license. Nope. Don't know what I'm gonna do about that. Well, I'm probably not gonna do too much with the particular license uh, anyway. Count publish time. Could make a graph. No, it looks like it's either it's 2020, which makes sense. The um, the uh, COVID-19 really only showed up as a threat in uh, really around like early January that it started being uh, really understood and documented. Um, so, and, but then a lot of missing data. So I'm not going to do much with published time. Uh, it doesn't have anything like a month, which would have been useful. There's a has full text, which we can filter and we see over 13,000 that do have full text. They filter down to those. Okay. So that's also, uh, useful to know. Uh, am I going to do much with the titles? Am I going to do much with the abstracts? I'm deciding that now. Mm. I think I'm going to come back to them. Uh, I want to show how I might go about parsing this JSON data, uh, even if at the end I might mostly be looking at the um, at the abstracts. Let me take a look also at uh, what does the README have? Okay. PMC poor source papers. All right, yeah, I've really, I've definitely um, there's there's some missing data in here. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna start taking a look at the um, the extracting text from all the full papers. There might be additional abstracts too. Something I'm curious about is how many abstracts are there. Abstract is that the paragraph that starts out a paper, not is an A abstract. Okay, so 26,000 of them have abstracts. All right, that's good. Uh, that's good to know. You know, hmm, am I gonna start starting with, am I gonna first look at the abstract? No, I'm gonna start by parsing the full papers. Okay, so um, the abstract is gonna have the most important things in terms of the topic. It's going to describe some of the conclusions. It's gonna show what directions of research uh, people have been going in. The authors might be interesting too. I might take a little bit of a look at that. But first, I really wanna show how we're going to get the text out of these, uh, out of these papers. So f what we're gonna do is work with all the files in the, I have it in downloads, 2020-13. Let's use the commercial use subset uh, and, oh, uh, there's a folder within that, okay? And set full names equals true. <clears throat> These are the, f the paths to each of them. Now what I'm gonna do is use pers map along with read JSON. Uh, and that's gonna grab out all the JSON objects. It's gonna parse every single one of those. And there's about nine, there's 9,000 of those uh, in this uh, commercial um, one. We can see because there's a thousand and then 8,000 missing entries. Uh, I'm going to need then to parse some things out of it. We're going to explore one of these objects. First, we can see we're going to care about the paper ID. You know, metadata, we might end up, hmm, it could be useful because we have last names parsed separately here. Maybe I should, uh, maybe I should pull that out. I'll, t I'll be taking a look at that. Uh, we have abstract. Uh, and, mo and importantly, we have body text and we have all the references. Uh, why have I been saying that I'm interested in the references? Because I think I might want to look at like what papers are cited a lot that someone might want to look at, what a researcher might want to look at. I might want to look at do these papers cite each other? Uh, all, all those are things I'm interested in. Uh, I was stalling for time too because I'm still waiting on this. Uh, but let's see. The um, All right, I'm going to care for paper ID. To care about the body text, uh, and then we're going to care about. See, body text appears in multiple paragraphs in a row. Yeah, so we need to join all those texts together. Okay, so if we look at JSON objects, just look at the first one for a moment. 
And uh, that, it gets turned into a named list. And oh, we could grab out the paper ID. Oh, we could grab out the abstract, which itself, oh, no list, no abstract in this one. Uh, is there a text, body text in this one? There is. Uh, so this one has like body text, but the text is just one figure. This doesn't look like a great example. Ooh, this one's great. This one has 21 paragraphs. And um, we can read through and we can say, there we go. Oh, is that 21 paragraphs? Or maybe it is. It's hard to say. Here's our text. Uh, each of them will have a text item field. Okay. I'm going to want to... Um, uh, I'm going to want to pull out particular items from every one of these objects. There's a great verb I've only recently started mastering called hoist from the tidyr package. So this is for when you have a nested list, just like this JSON output, uh, that you want to turn into a, um, into, uh, into a rectangular form. So the first step is to turn into a tibble. This is a 9,000 row tibble that is each going, where each object is one of these named lists. Okay, um, that does, that's not so useful. I can't do anything with that. What I would do is pipe this to hoist and say hoist from the JSON object. I want paper ID equals, uh, I want to pull out the paper ID from every single one. Just hit me. I probably want to create this tibble object. Does this take a while to run? JSON tibble. Maybe if I'm going to keep messing with this, yeah, it takes a second. Maybe if it, keep, uh, if it keeps t taking time, I'm going to want it to... Uh, I just have a lot of stuff in memory. I think that's the reason it's being a little slow. All right, the point is that I hoisted out. I hoisted this to the top level. It's no longer just a paper ID. It's up at the top level. Level. Now, you know what else I can grab out? I can grab out, um, I could grab out, here it is, the um, metadata. Now, that is also going to be pulled to the top level, but as a list. Uh, so, and, and what, were the, what were the items in it? Oh, there was a title and an author. So actually, I don't really think an authors. Hoist allows me to say, dig down into metadata, grab the title, and now here we go. There it is, metadata authors. So yeah, now that you've got your Paper to your title, your list, your nested list of authors, and you've still got your JSON. Uh, all right, so notice that we're getting a little bit more helpful here. Uh, now, can I? Yes, I could also say, then the important one I could say is abstract equals C abstract text. I think that was right. Uh, let's, take a, let's take one more look at this. Within the abstract, there's, well, abstract's a list and each one contains text. Does that work out okay? No, it does not. Uh, can I get, can I somehow join them together? So by the way, this is like called a pluck, this is like a pluck specification, uh, which allows me to, to uh, get a set of ac accessors, like here, the integer, the string name, ooh, does this work? An accessor function. I wonder if abstract, I'm gonna try something out here. What I'm gonna try is map.text, map uh, string. No, it doesn't, uh, what, if I, what if it was an actual function? Okay, so it needs to be, if it's a function, it can't be a tilde. Oh my goodness, what is, the, I've never seen this before. What is a question, question, question mark? I've, I have no idea what that, what that is. Literally no idea. Uh, pull a head one, pull abstract. See, I, I learned this stuff as I go unspecified. Okay, uh, something I guess would do with pluck. Pull abstract. Pluck one. What is the class of this object? I'm just really like, I kind of want to vector. Okay, this is a vectors thing, and I really don't know my way around the vectors, vectors package is unspecified. Is there a thing I can do for that? Hmm. Well, I'm going to try this anyway. Uh, this kind of a, is this silly? 
I mean, it's a little silly. Whatever. I'm going to grab up the abstract. That's not what we're here for. Um, so why am I doing the abstract like a, a map? Because there's multiple of them. And I'll need to do the same thing for the body text. Uh, grab out of body text. Map character text. And there we have it. We have like character vectors, each of which contains the text of the paper. There's a lot more I could get out. I could get out the references. Why don't I pull out the references? And then I'm going to select minus JSON. Uh, but I'm going to say, let me do one more hoist of, uh, what is it called? I can do. Viv entries and there's ref entries. I wonder what the difference between them. Oh, the reference is like figures and such. We can probably skip the figures. Um, of course, it could be interesting, um, but we might not get anything out of it today. But the important thing is we're, we're seeing like how to grab out each part of this. We're going to call it, um, it's called Viv entries. See, the trouble with the Viv entries. is like, we're gonna need to do some fuzzy matching There's all, if we wanted to like match them together. Uh, what I'm, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna pull out the bib entries and keep it as it is for now. Uh, and I'm gonna call this article data. So I'm curious about how big is this JSON objects? Is it so huge? Is that the reason I'm having a hard time uh, Everything's slow. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not good at reading decimal points. What is that in megabytes? 480 megabytes, maybe? No, it's 4.8 gigabytes. So, no. Uh, yeah, mm, that's big. Uh, yep. Oh, nope. That might have been a mistake. Uh, yeah, uh, that's big. So I'm actually not going to read all the papers in this time, um, but you could combine together the lists from a couple of these subfolders, uh, or work with it recursively, and you'd be able to um, uh, you'd be able to work with uh, this yourself. Okay. La last thing I'm going to do here is say mutate. Uh, let me look at the top view. Let me say mutate abstract equals map character abstract. String C, collapse, com paste together the abstracts. Okay, I like, I'm glad this at least worked. What I do is I'm, I'm putting together the abstracts into like uh, their individual paragraphs. Uh, and then if I say, pull, and let's throw in a filter not is in a abstract. You know, let's do that for the text too. You know, now that I'm seeing it, let's do that here. String C. So this is my, I'm changing my accessor function in the hoist to combine all the text elements of uh, the abstract into one. So this is like a, this hoist is a lot of work in terms of our data rectangling. It's gonna turn these into our text fields. And then we say article data, Gosh, this object's big. Uh, and we say article data, and I'm still leaving authors as a list. I haven't decided what to do with exactly what to do with it yet. And um, oh yeah, let's filter for not as an abstract. And here we have our papers. Uh, and okay, I'm actually going to throw in the filter. Is an abstract technically could have a text and no abstract. I'm not going to feel like that's all that likely. So uh, here we go. Title, abstract, and we have the body text. Now, hmm. I'm curious about a lot of, uh, of what to do with this. One is like, do I want to separate out the sections? Do I want to separate out? At some point, I probably am going to separate things like, oh, what's the introduction? What's the 
individual sections. Uh, likely going to do something to do with that. Okay, but first I'm going to do a little bit of text mining. All right, so I don't need this anymore. Here's my article data. All right, what am I going to do for text mining? Well, for starters, I'm going to do an um, I'm going to do unnest tokens on the title. Oops. Uh, and splitting it into words. This is from the tidy text package by me and Julia Silgi. And what we see here is we have word, count word, and art in the titles, the word virus appears a lot, makes sense, the description of coronavirus, but we can also, I could remove stop words. Uh, so say, add a join with words. This is unnest token splits every one of these under a separate uh, word. So we can say, for starters, if I just wanted to explore what are the most common words, I could make a graph that looks something like this. I would say, here we go, we call this title words, and I just split one word for each line. I'll say, take this, what are the 20 most common words? Coword flip mutate word equals I'll reorder this, get a little graph that goes, okay, virus, respiratory infection, influenza, this is not like, you know, it's not super exciting. Uh, poor sign is relevant because I think, uh, so having something to do with pigs and maybe it shows relationships to swine flu, uh, could be. We see the word coronavirus appears a lot. I don't see the word COVID here. Um, all right, and, um, but yeah, these are words that appear in many titles. Again, we're not doing, that's not doing much. It's not telling us much. It's like, it's not, not, not even, it's really not exciting at all. I'm gonna, just for kicks, I'm gonna do that again for the abstract. Never hurts to like, take a quick look, see that things make sense. These stop words aren't even like, biology specific, uh, science specific ones, so it's not uh, perfect. Um, but we'll take a look at the abstract Oops, word abstract. Why did it, uh, did it count too early? Hmm. Well, um, all right, and this, oh, I didn't redo it on. Here it is. Okay, so very similar. Uh, the results, RNA, patients, host, data, health, nothing. Um, Nothing you can do, you know, this is like a word cloud. It's not really giving us any particular insight. Something that uh, I've been thinking about though is, first thing is, how can we tokenize in a way that's a bit more intelligent? And I wanna show Psy space, uh, Psy Spacey. So Spacey is a Python package for natural language processing that includes a lot of things, including named entity recognition. Named entity recognition is when it finds like snippets that are biologically, me that are like meaningful in, in a real context. Something like um, it might uh, be a person's name, it might be a company's name. In this case, it might be a biological term. Uh, so the so, uh, Sci Spacey gives us a set of, um, of these packages, of these um, models, I should say. And here's one, and load uh, n core Sci small, so this is a, um, a small model they load. The example that they give here is they'll, NLP, they'll parse it uh, with this function, and then they'll find the entities extracted by a mention detector. And these, it looks like, are, um, are bits in the text that might have an entry in UMLS. It's UMLS. It's Unified Medical Language System. So I've taken a little bit of a, I've taken a, little bit of a look at, 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 spot, at size space before. I installed it before we started to make sure I wouldn't spend the whole time installing. I haven't looked at it with this data yet. Um, so here, uh, yeah, the, the story is here, like if we have myeloid-derived suppressor cells, um, MD, MDSC, R immature, the point is that like these are actually one big term, myeloid-derived suppressor cells. And this can actually tell that that's a term, myeloid cells a term. Similarly here, we might have something like uh, COVID-19 might be a term, or corona and virus, or viral infection. I'm not, um, I'm not really sure yet, but the story is we might have terms that should, be, that should be multiple tokens. Our tokenizer, an unnest token, is a default English one. It might not be well-suited to this problem. So, we're gonna use 
space C, but we're not gonna use Python, we're gonna do it in R. Uh, space CR. So Space CR is a package developed by uh, Ken Benoit. It's it's really amazing, and the um, uh, it's really amazing. It's it's really a terrific wrapper around Python. And what we're gonna do is um, is here it is. The way that it works is that we load in Space CR, and we have to initialize it with our Python installation. As it happens, I've got. Let me see. Is this the right Python? Is that the right Python? Hmm. Oh, I don't know the right Python. Let me see. In the terminal. That's okay. I'll grab it out of here. I think it'll still work. I installed Miniconda. And I think if I say SciPy and initial, oh, not SciPy, spacey initialize. Let me see. Then this, oh yeah, then we say Python executable. I remember this. Python executable is here, and we give it the name of the model. I installed the model in advance. I'm going to use the medium model now. We'll try the large one later. Uh, that is, there are three sizes of, mo of model here. Um, and uh, I don't know what the difference really is going to be on this data or anything like that, but here we go. I'm saying spacey initialize. I'm initializing with a particular model. That's taking some time. I just know that if I then do something like spacey extract entity, well, let's try maybe if this is just takes all day to run. I should be able to run it on a script, a, a string, a little bit like what they show here. Hey, initialized. So the story is like, I just ran it on this string, and it said, we pull this out, we pull this out, we pull this out. That does not look the same as this. Oh, that was in small. Hmm. What if I restarted our, if we restart our, I've got to get all the data back. Hmm. This problem is I don't think I can, that didn't work. Well, here's what I'm going to try. Try restarting R. I'm just curious to the small model maybe show this version. Uh, it's definitely like it's similar. We can actually see like some of the same terms. Uh, but it, it is myeloid. If this one separates myeloid and suppressor cells and then MDSC. Um, all right, so I'm starting with, let me do this, reinitialize. This is me being curious if I can reproduce what's in that example. No, I can't. I had to keep to the small one, and then I'll switch to the large one later, and we'll see if it makes any difference. Uh, small might be re more reproducible. Might might be faster. I don't really. Uh, I haven't tried it on a data set even remotely this large before. Um, but the story is notice that it doesn't just break it down into like individual words. It has immunosuppressive activity as being an entity. A little weird that it threw, leaves in the um, the new line there. Never, not crazy about that. Hmm. But uh, all right. Uh, but I am working with this, and I need to do it in a tidy format. I actually am going to want to um, uh, to apply this to use this with unnest tokens. This line actually really fun, which you might not know is that ti if you even if you use tidy text, tidy text can take a uh, a, a custom tokenization function. So, what I'm going to say is tokenize spacey. Uh, tokenize spacey entities. Uh, size spacey entities. That's not, that's not short. It's not too long at all. If I take text, then I apply spacey extract entity to that text. Oh, I just remembered I forgot to do this. Reload after running this. Do I still have my data? No, no. Do I still have Do I still have article data? I do not. I rerun this section. 
that's going to take a minute. Uh, but the story is that it's going to extract the entity and notice that it actually still has everything in doc ID. That's not going to be good. I need to do group by doc ID and nest. That's going to, so the point is that like this is, oh, all of these are text one. If I gave it two strings, uh, if I gave it uh, uh, like two lines here, I want to end up with a list and each element of the list to contain the tokens within it. By the way, something cool here is this actually shows what's like the start um, of each of the, um, like position within the tokens uh, in this string, which is kind of cool. Uh, but the, in terms of like, you can actually say, oh, well, this one starts position one, position three, position six. The uh, more I think about it, the more we should have some, we should build some spacey like into tidy text, make them work really well together. I think other people might want to use named, un, like unnest entities. Okay, that's a name. Does that exist? Could Julia write that? Unnest entities in tidy text. Nope, well, we're going to. We're, we're, uh, I think that sounds like a pretty good idea to me. Uh, so we're going to, but the story is we're going to extract entities here. Um, we group by this and then we nest and then we pull out, oh, uh, I'll show what, what, what this looks like because it's going to be a little bit of an adventure. Uh, the story is, imagine I took this string and I ran, uh, took, I'm trying to keep the video up with uh, what I'm up to here. Going a little slow because of the size of that JSON objects. I'm going to remove the JSON objects for a while. I think that might end. I don't know. Just for good luck, I'll I'll do some gar I'll do garbage cleaning. Um, all right. The sometimes if you remove a huge object, sometimes that can help. Not all that often, but I think this might have. All right. So the story is if I pass this two sentences. I, I, right now, I want it to end up in a list of character vectors. Uh, it's not doing that yet. So what I'm going to do is to also pull data. Now I get a list of data frames. Map text. Here we go. Uh, and now I get like, okay, this is uh, lists of the um, tokens within each. Okay. And... Uh, all right, and then, so I'm taking the, the so I've got this, this is called now a tokenizing function. Uh, and like the tokenizers package, for example, you can find tokenized words, which if I applied the tokenized words to this same vector, it just would have gotten this out. And that's what unnest text is doing under the hood. Well, not anymore. What I'm gonna do is create, ab instead of abstract words, I'm gonna create the abstract entities. Here we go, unnest, entity, abstract. I'm not gonna do any stop word, anything. Notice that actually, in the process, uh, this actually removed stop words, and it did them in like a scientifically intelligent way. It, because uh, Psy, um, Psy Spacey actually does know like, oh yeah, the word V is not uh, meaningful, but, it, but it's able to pick out the other um, entities that are meaningful. Let's take a look at these abstract entities. Should be one line for each article, for each entity in each article. Oh, hey, hey, this got really big, I bet. Bet this became a real issue. So big that it can't even uh, print. That's great. That's, uh, I was hoping that would happen. Right on, right on schedule. I'll tell you what I think happened. I left the, um, the full body text in there. That was a mistake. Uh, because when you I nested the abstract, it ended up duplicating the text, the full text of the whole paper for every single word in the abstract. I'm going to do something, uh, we professionals call this uh, bailing out. No, we, I just, uh, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to, ah, ah, oh, oh boy, oh boy, where am I? Uh, I'm in repositories, data, screencasts. I open up a whole new R studio by the time that this one is, oh, that's great. Hey, everybody, R can do big data too. I am not, I am not, a, but you wouldn't know it to look at me. Uh, here we go. Chord 19. I copied and pasted everything. Ooh, boy. 
That's really uh, having a fun time. I'm going to try force quitting this. Which one is it? Is it this one? Good. OK. And I'm going to have to rerun that code. So for that, folks, um, I'll tell you what so going, yeah. I'll tell you what the um, next step is going to be. Is instead of I'm really going to need to do, take your article data, uh, and I'll I can unnest the abstract, but I need to conclude only the ID, uh, the ID. Hmm. I guess I can keep the title. Could I keep the title? I can probably keep the title. Uh, I can use the title to refer to them, or I'll use the DOI. DOI and the abstract. The story is drop all these other columns that are about to get duplicated um, over and over and over. Oh, that's the metadata. Oops, that's the metadata. That's not the one I wanted. Uh, I wanted to look at the, oh yeah, paper ID. It was called paper ID. Fantastic. All right. This was the metadata, the thing that I'm looking at there. There's actually some wisdom here, which is generally don't uh, start by analyzing your full data set, uh, because then, let's say, if you do something a little bit wrong, it all crashes, uh, you, uh, you're off by just a little bit, like it's not, um, you find yourself waiting a lot. Sometimes we could have just probably done a thousand of these objects. Just for now, I'm going to remove JSON objects, GC. And notice I'm not bringing in the other papers. If you're doing this at home, you absolutely can bring in uh, all the papers, analyze them. Uh, just make sure you follow the license in terms of how you share them if you use them for commercial um, uses. Uh, but what I'm doing here is, I'm just trying to clear up a little more memory. Here we go. What I'm doing is tokenizing, and whoop, I did not uh, initialize space CR. I'm going to start with just head 100, uh, tokenize just 100 of these. Here we go. And the source of dendritic cells, parentheses DCS, are, oh, I left it in as, um, as the regular unnest tokens. Here's what I need. I have to add token equals, and I give it this function, tokenize size spacey entities. So now it'll apply that function to the vector of, um, of abstracts instead of applying the, um, uh, instead of applying the, the English tokenizer. So notice a couple things. One is it says um, dendritic cells, DCS, are specialized antigen presenting cells. Uh, and we also see, then we see something about APCS, immune responses, innate, adaptive arms. What's adaptive arms in viruses? Is that a, is that a thing? Is that? Adaptive arms. Arms of the adaptive, adaptive, hmm. What was the title of that one? I'm going to leave in the title. And now if I said title one, oh, that's the next, wait, that's probably the next paper. Hmm. Hmm. This doesn't match. If I did this to abstract entities, Nope, no, no, article data. I'm doing something wrong. Let's find out what I'm doing wrong. Okay, these have six. Oh, it's the abstracts, not the titles. Okay, all right, I was a little bit, uh... here it is. Okay, they bridge, all right, here we go. All right, arms of the immune system. They mature upon recognition of, all right, pathogens and upregulate MHC molecules. Okay, the point is that we've got things pulled out like transiently exposed neutralization epitopes. Here I think what's mostly doing is combining adjectives and, um, and nouns, uh, but like transiently exposed uh, neutralization epitopes, not to be confused with all the other types of epitopes. And um, let's see, we, use it, we, have, we do have nouns as well. We have, um, yeah, the story is we're actually getting scientifically meaningful um, tokens out of this. The only difference is I really want to uh, 
make these lowercase. Uh, map, pull the text out of each, map string to lower from string r. All right, instead of the first thousand, I'm gonna sample n, really handy, I'm gonna say sample n 1000. Hmm. Do I still need the title? I don't really need the title. I'll let this run. All right. So now what I'm doing is um, is it's performing this tokenization and entity uh, named entity recognition um, on every one of these uh, these abstracts, and then out of those abstracts, I can start to find out um, a little bit more. Start to do things. Um, I could remember. I could use the full text as well. Um, I'm. Uh, th it's already taking long enough on just the um, the tokens. This is not a an R thing. This uh, is I think just applying the tokenization and each of the steps to every one of those. All right. It would take. It's just a wrap around the Python version. All right. So I'm going to do count entity sort. What are the most common entities? All right. The uh, in these are in abstracts, not in um, these are in abstracts, not in uh, in uh, titles. What we see then is. All right, so virus has moved down in the list, and I think the reason is it, it's probably split off with like other things like coronavirus or SARS. SARS is not, it's not other word virus, or other types of um, viruses that might have an adjective attached to them. Uh, so I'll show what I mean by that. Let's see. I want to see if entity n geom call cohort. I'm doing the same thing I did before. Really, somebody, somebody helpful wrote a shortcut this, which I have not, to, to create that graph, which I have not yet installed. Okay. What we show then is, here are the common uh, named entities, and MERS Cove, yeah, MERS was, what was that, 10, 2010 or 12? Uh, there was a, um, there's an outbreak. Yeah. Uh, all right. And see, study operations, human infection, viruses, data, host associated with background virus, it's funny as I don't see the word COVID. Hmm. Or, yeah, I don't know. Um, if I take a look at a, I'm curious, like, is it just, is COVID not being recognized in these? If I looked at title and picked, oh, not title, abstract, and picked a random one, would it be talking about the, however, do the antigenic? No, I think a lot of these just aren't necessarily about aren't necessarily about COVID-19. Okay, that's something worth knowing. All right. Uh, and if I said abstract, two, here we go. And bats, yeah. All right. All right. So um, what am I going to do? What am I going to do with these abstract entities? I have a thousand. I'm going to try pulling in 2,000. Later we can grab all of them if we like. We don't even need to do it just out of these 9,000 we have the full text for. Uh, we might want to do is look at the, um, is is a couple of things we could do. We could look at commonly uh, co-occurring entities, uh, at, or we could take a look at topics. I'll try to classifying these into topics. I'm going to start with co-occurring. This is, I'm going to want to do a little bit of what we call um, uh, unsupervised learning, just a little bit of like clustering. What are groups of uh, words that tend to appear together. Uh, these entities are going to be, yeah, those might be uh, end up being like particularly meaningful in terms of saying, okay, well, here are the, the categories of papers that are included in this, uh, this data set. So I'm just, I don't expect to discover anything new here. This is more about like understanding the, um, this is more about understanding uh, the, uh, the data, understanding like 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 the the shapes of what uh, what kinds of data have been included here. So what I'd start by doing probably is say is add a count to entity and say okay if you if you don't appear at least fifty times you're not even you don't even count. So the story is like uh, there are one hundred sixty six thousand uh, entities, but I'm going to remove the ones that aren't at a certain level of frequency, heck, I'm gonna start by saying, make it 100. Add count says, okay, here's how, how many times entity appears, filter, 
how often this one appears. And now what I'm going to do is load up my YDR package, which can then find correlations among these uh, entities. Pairwise core among entity based on paper ID. <coughs> Uh, and notice this just comes out of these two, these are the two columns in it, and sort equals true. What is the correlation between a word appearing in, a, um, uh, in an abstract and another word appearing? All right, uh, in v spe sensitivity, specificity, uh, in vitro and in vivo, those are like pairs of things. Is or a um, scientifically meaningful? It's not, hmm, I, wonder, I don't know what that, that is. All right, and we all see pairs like mers, Mers Cove, all right. Uh, some of these are, are like, Pedivy presumably is a virus that is common in, in pigs. Okay, so we're starting to get like a feel for some of these um, frequencies. I'm gonna call this entity, entity correlations. And you know what, I'm only gonna pick, notice every one of them appears twice. I'm gonna pick the top, I'm making this up. I'm gonna just pick the top 400 uh, and we'll try looking at those pairs of things. What, what am I looking at right now? What I'm going to do is do library ggraph. ggraph is really helpful, but I also sometimes use igraph uh, for, um, what do I do? Graph from data frame of entity correlations. Oh, here it is. And now I've created, turned this into a graph. Then I want to say ggraph. I like, uh, there's a different layout I like. And I'm going to create a network out of these. I'm going to say we put a geome edge link, AS edge alpha equals correlation. I put in a geome node. I've just done this with text so many times, so I'm uh, doing it quickly without spending a lot of, of time describing it. Uh, this is the this is the correlation network of work. This is not, uh, despite its look, this is nothing to do with, like, say, contagious of disease. These are how often do words appear together in abstracts. Which words? Well, if we don't know that, we don't really know anything. So I'm going to add um, geom node text, uh, and it's label equals name, pal equals true. I'm also going to add theme void, uh, kind of just like, uh, kind of like it without the gray background, though your mileage may vary. Okay, what is this? These are topics within, uh, here we go, yeah. These are topics. Uh, generally, like, like topics, I mean like they're, they're clusters of words. You know, we might have a few too many connections here. Hmm. No, this might actually be, be kind of meaningful. Okay, what groups uh, of things do we see here? Uh, well, we see a couple of viruses. We see like SARS and MERS here. We see MERS linked closely to bats and MERS Cove. Uh, we see uh, here's a section, there's a section on vaccines. Uh, this is just like, did it appear in the paper, in the abstract at all or not? Like mentioned the word vaccine and vaccines or vaccine and protection, uh, vaccination and uh, 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 efficacy as well as all of these other ones. Um, review, this is a cluster about um, vaccines. Uh, this is one about protein binding, uh, functions, interaction, binding, uh, interactions, etc. Um, there's other ones. There's like uh, patients. There's these. This looks like the section that's more about um, epidemiology in the sense of like uh, detection, negative prevalence, samples, uh, sensitivity, specificity, or uh, me measures of a test's um, accuracy. Um, and uh, yeah, then we see a section on like epidemic outbreaks, SARS, MERS, coronaviruses. So here, yep. So he, yeah. So this is a um, uh, like this kind of is mapping out the set the the topics of a um. I'm gonna add one thing. Can I say legend position? Can I say that here? I cannot. I have to put in an additional. I don't quite want the legend here, but I also say. I want a title, I want a words that often appear together in abstracts. When you have a graph, you often want to set a seed, like set seed 2020. Uh, why am I doing that? So that, that if I graph the, oh, oh, it's not the theme here. It's labs, labels. 
uh, so that if I graph this multiple times, the same clusters will appear in the same areas. It's a random layout. Uh, yeah, so we see like, here's the pig section. Here's the uh, it's the same graph. We just it just is replotted in a different uh, order. Uh, Okay, why do this? Because uh, it does help, uh, it does start to help give a sense in terms of what are the types of topics that are described in these papers. Uh, what we probably would find is that, um, do we have journals in this metadata? What do we have? Do we have journal and metadata? Let's find out. Count, looks like we do. Journal, sort equals true. Okay, um, but most of them don't, most of them don't have a paper. Hmm, that's frustrating. I actually wonder with these, Do we have anything else about it? Paper ID, title, authors, abstract, back matter. Hmm. Not all that much. Okay. Uh, so last thing. Uh, so. I'm just noting this is like, this is a first thing we could do towards uh, saying what are the common topics in this, oh, I'm sorry, my cat literally just scratched me. Sorry about that, oh, wow. Uh, what are the common topics uh, in abstracts of this collection of, of uh, COVID, of coronavirus related papers? All right, so that's something we can learn out of, out of text mining, uh, we, just in the first hour. Uh, what's the, um, let's see. Other things we could have done with the abstract, we could have done topic modeling, which would have tried clustering them into a into a particular number of topics. Uh, we probably we probably should do that at some point. Um, sure, we will. Uh, but oh, these aren't words; these are entities that appear together in abstracts based on the size spacey named entity recognition model. Okay. So, uh, here we go. Right. Uh, that, so, so that, that's at least what one says. We could keep going on the, um, in terms of what are topics of these papers, try breaking them down, like basically adding extra metadata to them, uh, which could help to start to understand, okay, what are the, what are the, the topics that are discussed? Um, all right, that's one start. Another, the next direction we're doing, the time with this is about 15 minutes, so keeping not much more than an hour, is to look at references. Uh, let's take a look at our article data again. Uh, we have our bibliography entries. I'm going to select just the paper ID and the bib entries. What uh, is the, so the bib entries have, every item in them has a name, but they're not very, they're not the most interesting names. Uh, but they show where, where, I guess they show where they're associated. Like here we go, we can see, for example, ref spans. Ah, but this one doesn't even have any ref spans associated with it. Uh, I think a ref span is supposed to be like, oh yeah, this passage has this citation. I'm not going to quite, I'm not necessarily going to look at that right now. Because um, it looks like at least, it's missing in at least some, it's missing in this one. But let's take a look at, at, our, um, at our actual references. Refity, title, authors, etc. Okay, yeah, first thing to do is to unnest the bib entries. I'm gonna do this on just 100 examples because you never know when something is gonna take a lot longer than you expect. Now here I could hoist it. Do I wanna hoist it or is there another thing I can do? What I'd love to do is can I just, I just want every level here at the top. Is that a thing I can do? I wonder if I did unnest longer to bib entries, what happens? Oh, I know, I want unnest. Oh, okay, this is cool. What this is showing is like, oh, in ref ID there is this, in title there is this, in author there is this. I don't want that. I want unnest wider. Oh, this is great. I actually haven't used this function before, but I was just hoping that because it's related to hoist, it would turn out similar. Unnest wider. What a great, uh, what a great function. So this is I'm going to call our references. Article references. That remember what I just did was only for a hundred. Uh, now I'm doing it for all of them. Uh, not uh, yeah, all the nine thousand that I, I parsed earlier in this. Um, the nine thousand ones that are available for commercial use, which I parsed earlier. Mm. 
Wow, unnest wider. That's a great tool for. Um, uh, notice I needed to unnest the list first to to like get every one of these on a separate row, but then I did I wonder. Huh. Element of a list column. No, ele each element of a list column into a column. Yeah, I think I needed one on nest and then one on nest wider. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, certainly taking its time, but this actually, um, something I, I sometimes do when I work with this is like, you know, your mileage may vary, but this is not going to be a huge data set. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, but I could take it, and if I just remove the authors, and the other IDs. Nothing to stop me from, say, saving it. I'm not going to commit it to GitHub, but um, nothing to stop me from saving it. I wonder if this is... Um, huh. I wonder if this is slower or faster than if we'd written it in a different way. The unnest wider, that is. As I said, I haven't tried it before. I'm gonna let it run a minute longer. Uh, what might we wanna do with these references? I think the most common thing I would usually wanna do is take our references and count what are the titles that are the most often, um, what ti what, ti what these are not the titles of the articles, the titles that are of the articles that are referenced. What articles are most referenced? And then I can say, you know, I can, I can keep coding even, with, even while this is running. I can say uh, title N, I make this graph all the time. We're gonna. I'm gonna say what are the most. We're gonna do this title while we're doing it. I wonder if I should should like. I wonder if there's a way to publish the cleaned versions of these. Clean not in terms of like doing tokenization, but rather um, uh, doing this kind of like uh, reference parsing, uh, like pulling out there. I'm actually going to, I'm going to pull this on up a little bit earlier because if people, other people want to try doing this themselves, I want it, my exploratory data analysis not to get in the way. So I'm going to say exploratory data analysis. And I'm gonna move all that. I don't really need any of this. Extra. Wow, this is a lot, lot slower than I, I kind of expected it to be. Uh, we can see a lot of things. We can see what years were the things people were public, the things we were publishing on. Yeah, a lot of things we can look at. There's just, just so much that can be done in this data set. Uh, if it ever finishes loading. Should have done it on a thousand. That's like a thing you do is you say, okay, well, I've done it on a hundred, it worked. Do it on maybe 300 or a thousand before you do it on the 9,000. I don't know how many references are in here. Uh, I don't know if some of them have weird fields. Uh, it's always possible. Should I kill it? Do we think it would work for me to kill it? I'm gonna kill it. Oh well. Uh, what I'm gonna do is say sample n 200. Does this work? So I'll try 500. Okay, and that probably is taking about as much time as I feel. I'm going 500 random articles and uh, pulling out the bibliography entries while keeping the paper ID so I can still go back. If we want later, we could go back and look more into like what, um, excuse me, we could look more into like uh, <coughs> what words are associated with what, uh, uh, what, what articles are associated with what papers. I'm really interested actually in looking at do any of these articles say each other, um, presumably so. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, all right. So then what I'll do is I'll do, we have our references, and now I'll say, yeah, I'll, I'll leave that in. Whoop. Ah. 
uh, there are some that are really, really way too long. You know how we do this? It's actually called string trunk. But I'm actually going to, here it is. There's actually, the problem here is that some of these are not going to be real. Here we go. Uh, so it looks like some, refer some quote references are not references at all. Uh, even this, actually, I do not know. Uh, so, so some of these are not references. So I can actually quickly just say like filter, not string detect. I'm going to put this in the, in the, um, in the cleaning. This is the other advantage to not making it too long as you say filter, not string detect, title. Yeah, I might need to do it more later. I'm not going to put it in the cleaning step. What I'll say is submit, your next, or this article, or Springer Nature Remains, or Publishers Note. Sure. Okay. So one of the stories, there's one that's like isolation of a novel coronavirus with Middle East Repertory Single Coronavirus. What we're seeing then is there's a couple articles that are really, well, when I say highly referenced, I mean out of this 500, uh, they're, um, uh, they end up in like 15, in 15. Okay. So the, um, in fact, what I could say is count mutate percent equals n divided by n distinct of article references paper ID. We know they're 500, but not everyone might. And we'll say what percentage of articles mention this. I'll even throw in a labels equals scales percent format. So this shows like, okay, 3% of articles, um, and that could just be noise, uh, have this, have this. Then here are a couple other common ones. One thing we see here is like, oh, okay, there could be duplicates across some of these names. These two, um, I'm actually not sure. And it, lots of things could start with that. I'm going to truncate 50 characters, not nearly enough. Okay, yeah. Those, got, those two got separated, I think. Or got lowered. Hmm. So yeah, here's one. Isolation of novel coronavirus with minor pneumonia in Saudi Arabia. All right. So that's that. That's with 500. Can I do it with 2,000? I'm going to be a little bit patient. Let's find out. Bats are natural reservoirs. Okay, so that's actually the thing we're looking at is like, yeah, I wonder what year. Oh, yeah. We're going to be taking a look at the years. So, so, so uh, we don't actually have the years of all these articles, but it looks like we have the years of... If not all, maybe a lot of their references. It's not going to be a random sample, and that's kind of a complication. Uh, but it's something we can still look at, is we could say article references, unnest tokens, uh, entity. I'm going to look at the, uh, let's see, entity, title, and what did I call it? Token equals, I had a function. It was called tokenized size spacey entities. Uh, and I'm going to say, uh, first one we do is distinct title and year. Distinct title and year. Distinct title and year. I'm going to do distinct title and year, even though if, if a year is, and then filter, I'll do filter, not is in a year. I'll do this. I'm calling this referenced articles. Man, I do not like it when I let something run and then it takes longer than I expect it to. Don't love that. I wonder. If I don't need all of them, I don't need all of them. What do I need? I need article data. A nest wider is fantastic, but it looks like it might be a little slow. Uh, bib entries, hoist. Bib entries. I want to grab the title. I want to grab the uh, title equals title, year equals year. These are the two things I really kind of want. Uh, did it, is there anything else that is really? Oh, and um, volume, not volume. Venue is is solid. I pr 
probably want authors, but that's later going to be a list and that's going to be a little bit of, a, of, a, of an issue. Uh, so if I did this on 100, how hard is that? That's easy. Maybe unnest wider just happens to be a lot slower. It could be for a lot of reasons. Okay, I'm going to do this instead of... I loved unnest wider, but I'm going to... I'm going to leave that as an example. I'm actually going to use hoist. Uh, so notice I'm actually, I just, I'm trying to put something useful here. Where was I? Here I was. Title, venue, year. I think if I specify what the type is, it might make the unnest, that might be, make it easier than the unnest wider. Let's specify which columns I want. And then I can rerun this. And the 8,000 plus articles with, what do I say? Based on the, here we go. I'm actually going to say num articles. Notice how I said that would be this would be fast, and then it wasn't. Uh, welcome to the party. I'm not going to spend too much longer on this, but I think it's just really interesting uh, to look at the articles that are referenced based on the here's sign fun. I'm going to do glue, glue. Based on the articles with, on the, oops. check this out, I can actually use glue to specify, based on the articles, uh, open for commercial use. Add references. I like to put lots of details like that. There we go, oop, this, this doesn't exist yet. All right, so what do we see are the most referenced articles? This is still the top one, isolation of a novel coronavirus from man with pneumonia in Saudi Arabia. Uh, there's, this, is the, this is BLAST, a really common bioinformatics tool. Um, this could be, be COVID-19, I don't, I don't uh, this I think is SARS, severe acute respiratory uh, syndrome. Um, so these are, the mo are, the mo are at least the most referenced uh, of papers in the field. Now I was starting to ask something different. I was starting to say, let's take our, re our article references. Let's look only for the ones that have years, and let's distinct title and year, okay? And then let's unnest tokens among these titles. Ooh, there are too many. Really, there are 300,000 articles? So I guess there could easily be. It's, 9, 000, it's like 8,000 articles. How many articles are there? Uh, are there? There's 8,146. Okay, um, I'm going to sample in 100, uh, 500, and I'll try this out. Referenced article, uh, referenced article entities. I'm taking out the named entity recognition from the referenced article titles. All right, so then we see like what entities are used in what years. So what I can do then is count year and entity. And now I see, okay, in this year there are this many um, uh, mentions. I'm actually gonna filter for, I don't know, 1950 or something. Um, what I'm gonna do then is say, I only wanna keep, yeah. I only wanna keep somewhat common entities. So I'm gonna say group by entity filter some n, I don't know, at least 10 papers, 20 papers, 
no good. Two papers, three papers. I don't know, man. Uh, four, okay, so there are 50 words that appear in at least four papers, uh, 50 entities that appear in at least four uh, papers. Some M greater than equal to four. Okay, yeah. Uh, all right, why am I doing this? Because one thing we can do is say, um, actually, do it at least five. Why am I doing that? I'll show why. Because then I can say, well, how often do uh, does a word, particular word appear? I would say uh, year and geom call. If I wanted to say, so I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you say? By word entity year. So I can then say, here we go. By entity year, geom call. Uh, okay. So oh, I need to say filter for, um, yeah. So I can say uh, filter for entity equals bat. Here's an example, um, bats. Bats aren't mentioned a lot in even the referenced articles. Was this a sample? This was a sample. That might improve when we look at everything. Yeah, this will probably get better. I was wondering why there were so few papers each year. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm um, I'm take I'm looking at the individual words, the mentions of them, and then I'm going to say how often are these mentioned in a particular year? Now this is not normalized. This is not out of the. This is not divided by the full sum of coronavirus. Just like mentions per and it's uh. It's a funky set. It's like it's not even the set they said is related to coronavirus. It's all the papers that those are um, citing, that, that those are referring to. Uh, but then I can say, let's look at, at how often they mention per, by year. Instead of year, I could do, I could combine pairs of years while, it's while I'm waiting for this to run. Say year times year, two times, I think I can do this. I can do year, that's floor division, uh, so then it's, uh, it'll combine pairs of years together. Um, I don't know, I'm doing more than 1900s, and so otherwise everything always, it's always some paper that it thinks was in the year negative 2000 or whatever. Uh, but yeah, what it's doing, mm, this may take a while. You know, take a while, it's tokenizing 323,000 names using, um, uh, a spacey, a spacey model. Uh, how many abstracts that I have? Just, now these titles are shorter, but still considerably, oops, considerably fewer. I'm gonna charge my computer. I'm actually gonna, yeah. What I'm gonna do is run this. One second. One sec, let me see. Sorry, I've got a cat that's meowing. Uh, let's see. Uh, the year. Oh, did it, did it finish running? Nope, it didn't. I just sample and 3,000. Does this take, does this run in a reasonable amount of time? It's one of the issues with like text mining. Oh. Huh. Uh, you know what I bet happened? I bet it included one that didn't get, uh, that's another reason, ooh, boy. I bet it found some that didn't, oh, my, oh no. I bet there are some that don't have uh, any, to any, any uh, tokens. That means we have to rewrite this, um, this function. I'm not gonna do that now. Uh, Instead, what I'm going to do is actually a little bit simpler. I'm just going to look at words. I'm going to, use, I'm going to treat them as if they're English text, uh, just so I can show this. But we have a sense of like how we might go about uh, doing this with space, spacey. By word year.
Hmm. By word year, filter word equals bat, bats, all right. By word year, here we go. I can even include both. Okay, so this then does is it gives a way to say, okay, how much are bats talked about in citations from particular um, uh, in citations over time? Uh, where's 2020 would be, I guess there. Yeah, and, and the fact that there's like a spike does not necessarily mean, oh, the, the discussion around bats has gone down. It could just be the overall years have gone down. How can we tell that? Well, what we can do is we can look at the totals. We can take our referenced articles count year name equals total and one thing I neglect to do is say distinct paper ID word and year uh, because you don't want to, because if the same word appears twice in one, you don't. Oh. Hmm. I neglected to include the paper ID. Uh, oh, I eh, won't work that time this way. That's okay. Uh, if the same word appears twice, that seems pretty rare in a, in a, in a title. It doesn't seem like uh, that's the concern. Uh, all right. Then what I want to do is then graph filter word in this. Distinct word year. No, no, word. Oh, no, I don't want this at all. Oops, sorry about that, folks. Here we go. And then we say what percentage uh, of articles from that year mention this? That seems a bit high. Yep, and it is high. Uh, <coughs> Sorry, I'm a uh, year totals. How can it be higher than the year? Oh, because of this. <clears throat> I needed to count the um the combined like the merged year totals. Well, how does the word of appear 28,000 times if there's a total of n divided by, to oh my goodness, n divided by total, not n divided by year. Oh gosh. And uh, filter for year is less than or equal to 2020, current year. That's virus. That's all right. So how? So what this shows is not that oh the literature used to be really crowded with bat discussion. It rather shows that if someone cites an old paper, it's usually uh, in this corpus of COVID uh, nineteen related uh, papers. It's usually about uh, bats. So the point is how much do uh, how much do reference papers how much do referenced papers refer to bats in the title? Not a particularly special graph, but I wanted to I just wanted to show that there's things you can do with this data set of, ref of article references uh, that we can say, what are the, what are the venues, that the journals that include the most, um, uh, most articles? That would need some, uh, so it looks like it's Journal of Virology followed by Nature, Virology, Science, um, there's things we can do with this data. Um, could could have seen the most published authors. Could have done a, a, a lot of um, uh, work with this. Okay, so what did we do today? Um, I took a look at the um, I took a look at the metadata. We didn't do much with it. I extracted. I showed how you would use the hoist function from TidyR to extract uh, and a few other little tricks to extract all the um, data from each of these uh, JSON objects. In these um, in these files, 
I showed how you'd uh, pull out details um, of the article references, and then I did, we did some exploratory analysis with words and titles, abstracts, and most of all, space, uh, size spacey entities, where we actually did um, named entity recognition. This needs a little bit of work uh, to, be, to be production ready. Um, to, to work with larger uh, data sets, but the um, but yeah, he, but the story just is we we didn't just look at, at English tokenization. We also looked at um, uh, uh, models specifically trained for this purpose. And finally, I took a little bit of a look through article references. Saw that there are some papers uh, that um, whoever picked this data set of um, of articles, uh, those articles are um, tend to cite these papers the most, though they are still pretty well spread out, it's only a couple percent. Okay, so that was a that was just a shallow look into this data, really focusing the titles, the um, articles, a little bit of things, the references, a little bit of things in total time, a little bit of tokenization, um, 19, cleaning and expiration. Uh, I just, I really wanted to do something to, as I said, to get uh, to get a start out there in terms of how could someone pick up this data set and start analyzing it. Last thing I'll say is, is by far the most important thing that I or anyone I can do is probably to stay home, to wash our hands, uh, to spread that message to, um, uh, to, ev to everyone we love, uh, and um, uh, really hope that, if, that all of us work hard at this, the scientists and the uh, healthcare um, professionals and uh, everyone, and that together we can uh, get through this crisis. All right, thanks very much, and um, I'll see you for future screencasts.